today we're talking about my solution to UV curing my 3D prints, the Moai uh, curing chamber, which is a 3D print itself. Hey guys, what's going on? Michael here. So today I am taking this 3D printed Moai curing box and I'm going to get it ready to actually be able to use it for the prints that I'm getting from my Anycubic Photon S. So I ordered this uh, mirrored paper off of Amazon and I'm going to go ahead and change out to a good blade in my X-Acto. Um, if you remember, I intentionally break off the tip of my X-Acto blade uh, for some of the other things I have to do with my X-Acto knife, but for this project I actually need it to cut. So the mirrored paper um, was not too expensive. Um, the Having the actual box for the um, Moai uh, curing chamber uh, printed was more expensive than this mirrored paper that has to line the inside. Um, but all told, uh, you should be able to uh, do this project for under $30 um, if this is what you want. Uh, and then there's a, uh, a little UV light that you get off of Amazon which sits on the top. And that's about $10, um, not too expensive. Um, what I found um, was that uh, Etsy, uh, there was a person on Etsy selling this, um, this cure chamber pre-printed, um, ready to go. Um, and I, at the time that I ordered it, I did not know that it existed anywhere else. Um, but apparently this is a Thingverse file, and um, in retrospect, if I had known that, um, I would have downloaded the Thingverse file and had somebody else do the print, because um, I probably could have gotten it a lot cheaper than the, uh, than the person who had this for sale on Etsy. Um, I will be leaving a link to the Thingverse file uh, in the description. Uh, so anybody who's interested in this uh, will be able to get it uh, and I'll go ahead and leave a link to the uh, the self-adhesive mirrored paper as well um, at least the one that I use and I just basically got the cheapest one that Amazon had so first thing that we are going to do is we're going to cut a piece of this mirrored paper for the bottom of our 3D printed curing chamber. Uh, now what I am doing right now is I'm just testing to see how it peels and the paper that I got has both an adhesive backing and it also has a clear protective film that goes over top of the mirrored surface I'm guessing to keep that from getting scratched up. So once I get a piece of the paper cut uh, close to size, I'm just uh, setting the uh, bottom of this upside down and using my X-Acto to trace around it. This will leave me with a piece that is slightly too large to fit on the inside of my um, curing chamber. Uh, but ideally, um, I should just be able to take a pair of scissors um, and go around the entire outside perimeter and take off maybe a quarter of an inch and it should fit pretty perfectly. Um, this does not have to be flawless, uh, but the idea behind this is you've got one source of light which is going to cast down from above, so by putting this little reflective paper uh, on the inside, the foil, uh, we are able to essentially bounce that light around a little bit so that all sides of our resin prints will cure and dry. Um, I have uh, talked in other videos about how I did not really have a solution uh, for drying my prints other than setting them out in the sun, and unfortunately uh, in my area, I have been getting nothing but nothing but rain, which makes it really difficult to set any of these prints out in the sun because uh, 
you don't have a son. <laughs> so uh, I'm just checking the fit right now um, and I noticed that I cut it a little uh, lopsided uh, on one side and I think that was because um, my mat is pretty small. I actually plan on getting a bigger one and uh, unfortunately I think I was cutting off of the mat onto my table which is why the one side was a little odd. So we'll straighten that up and, uh, and then go ahead in with our scissors and get this cut to fit. Um, so we want this to sit flat without wrinkles. So it definitely needs to be cut smaller than the opening and um, essentially just go around the outside of this and, um, and cut it to fit. All right, now that we've got this cut to fit, we're going to carefully peel off the back paper. Uh, and I'm trying to do this without removing the clear protective film that's on the top, uh, but I did start to peel it in one corner just a little bit so that it would be easier uh, later to pull that off. It's not as well bonded as the backing paper, so I think if I had to, I could actually just stick a piece of scotch tape down on it and that would peel off the clear protective film. So I am pulling off just a little bit of this, uh, of this film, um, the backing paper, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and press it down and get it started along one edge and then I'll peel off the backing paper as I stick this down. Um, I thought that this would be a good way to do it um, at the beginning of this project and uh, turns out that, uh, that my first instinct was right. Uh, later in the project I decided that I would peel off an entire piece of backing paper and wound up getting a piece of film stuck to itself as you'll see. So. Um, it's a good way to do it. Just uh, just stick it down a little bit at a time. Uh, you want to get this really square though, um, which is why I'm kind of fussing over it a little bit. Alright, so our bottom piece of foil is really well bonded and we are ready to move on to our next step which is to cover the walls. So essentially we have two sections of walls. Uh, we have the short section which is the one right here that I'm working on and then there's the taller section which is the part that the actual light will sit on. So I just set the entire roll inside of the short section and I'm just kind of carefully marking the height and then I'll cut off a section of this foil that then I can uh, can wrap around the inside of our curing chamber box.
then once we have pressed down the foil firmly, I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to trim off the excess all around the edge. All right, here we go. We're ready to do the last piece of foil, which will be on the walls for the upper half of our curing chamber. Now, this was the one piece that I struggled with because I did not do what I had uh, been doing, which was to only pull off part of the backing paper at a time. I, uh, I went ahead and ripped off all of it, and that caused me to have issues with it sticking to itself. I thought that I could manage it and control it, and boy was I wrong. Uh, so same process that we have been, we're just going to cut a piece of foil, um, essentially a little bit taller uh, than what we need, and then we'll just trim off the excess with our X-Acto knife. Um, but it's, uh, it's a pretty straightforward process, and this stuff is not super sticky to the, uh, the 3D printed filament, but it will bond um, and do a decent job. And there we go. I have wrestled with this foil long enough. I'm just doing the final press to make sure that it's really stuck down well. And we are basically done our little project. Uh, so we have the 3D printed Moai uh, UV curing box lined with reflective foil on the sides and the bottom. And um, if you can see it fits together, gives you access so that you can put your prints on the inside and then a small UV light uh, off of Amazon sits right on the top uh, and when plugged in uh, provides you with um, all the, the curing power that you really need for uh, resin prints. Uh, so I will, uh, I'll be experimenting with this and see how well it does compared to the sunlight outside but I'm excited about the possibility. As always guys, thank you for watching the video, and if you have any questions, make sure to leave them for me in the comments. Hey, if you like these videos and want to help me keep making them, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button.